recording. We now place ourselves in the loving presence of God. In the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of this new day. This is Sunday, the day of your resurrection, the eighth day and the first day of the week. Moment to come together as you have instructed us to make this day holy. And of course, every day is holy, O oh Lord. Thank you for the gift of life you have given to each and every one, the gift of life to our loved ones. Lord, we want to be truly truthful to make this day holy for your greatest glory. We want to offer everything to you as we come together for our prayer, for our sharing, reflection, and your word, as well as to listen to your message to us, O oh Lord. Enlighten us, give us the inspiration, as well as the grace. And as we come and stay here, O oh Lord, we entrust your members of our families, wherever they are, to keep them safe, bless their hearts this hour, and accompany them. And ultimately, as we are united after this, may we find each other in the best of everything. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. Good morning and good evening and happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Father. Making some rephrases of my sharing today. But I would like to put it in this language in our sharing. The story of Bartimaeus is our story as well. And everywhere we are, it's our Jericho. And so nice to see the story of Bartimaeus because we have to look at our own blindness as well. Thanks God, we can see. But perhaps growing old, there would be always some problems in our eyes. We might have our glasses and everything. But the gospel would still speak of a spiritual blindness amidst the grace and the love of God that we have not really responded fully. And then in that regard, our difference only with Bartimaeus is another than we can see, but spiritually we have lost a lot of sense in seeing the grace and the love of God. But it should not stop there, seeing our spiritual blindness or our blindness itself, because we have to see its time, its place in particular as our Jericho. Why was it in Jericho? Bartimaeus sat down there as a beggar, because he was blind. But you know, blind people, they go anywhere where there are the crowds. But of course, they have hearing. And perhaps this Bartimaeus have heard a lot about Jesus. And he might be asking us, well, can he heal my blindness? He became curious as such, so that one day in that place, Jericho, he knew that Jesus was passing by as he was asking the crowd, what's happening? Why there is noise? Why there is commotion? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by because he's going to Jerusalem. So when we say every place is our Jericho, 
it becomes a moment of our encounter query as well, what's happening and to hear the voices, Jesus is passing by. And of course, the narrative will say Jesus is leaving Jericho towards Jerusalem where he was concentrated really to undergo his suffering, death, and resurrection. So Jericho becomes a spiritual place for us to encounter Jesus after examining our blindness. Because in this place, Jericho, amidst even the discouragement of the people when he started shouting, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Suddenly, Jesus heard him. And when Jesus heard him, he asked, he asked him to come. And the crowd started to say, Jesus is calling you. And look at Bartimaeus, he jumped, throw away his cloak, naked perhaps in front of Jesus, because he knew it was there. Quite surprising, he did not know where Jesus should be because of the many crowds, but he ran. His leap of faith, he's jumping in faith, throwing everything to go near Jesus. Or perhaps a crowd paved the way towards him. But you see a blind man throwing all, going to Jesus, seemingly he found his way because of his own way really of encountering the Lord as the Lord called him. And precisely when he was in front of Jesus, the beautiful question that should be as well for each and every one of us, I would like to invite you to feel Jesus standing in front of you. As we said, Bartimaeus' story is our story. We feel we are the new Bartimaeus and Jesus is standing in us, in front of us. And the beautiful question comes, what do you want from me? The same question he wanted to ask each and one of us, what do you want from me? We are standing in front of Jesus as we are the new Bartimaeus. Perhaps Tito Elmer would say, Lord, I want to get out from the hospital. You heal me. Depends on what we are, what we are asking. Something that is very dear to us. Because from the very beginning, Bartimaeus really asked, can Jesus heal my blindness? So when he was in front of Jesus, he had no second thought. Clear prayer from the heart. What he wished for. And ultimately, the Lord, your faith has saved you. He received his sight. A beautiful experience in the Jericho where he received his sight. A wonderful experience and truly a miracle where he was restored and suddenly see not just the beauty of the world, but he see the creator himself who created everything in the world. But perhaps a question could still be, if you are like Bartimaeus, after opening your eyes, what do you want to see? What do you want to do? Perhaps in our attachments, human language would like to say, Lord, want to see my loved ones. Want to see my husband, my wife, my children, loved ones. But Bartimaeus has no other inkling but to follow the Lord. Bartimaeus' story is our story. Jericho is our spiritual rebirth. And everywhere is Jericho, it means we follow the Lord wherever we are. And following the Lord, because we have not only seen him, it's not only because our sight are restored, but our faith is deepened and healing comes. And so therefore, Bartimaeus, who is now each one of us, have received once more the gift of our sight. Spiritually, in order to recognize the Lord, to see its place as our Jericho, and to hear the voice of God calling us. May we find that sight, may we find our Jericho, may we find Jesus, and ultimately, may we follow him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Thank Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For stopping by. For, for stopping, stopping by. by. For calling us. For, for calling. calling us and even asking us what we want and even, even asking us have. what we want lord your stopping is already a miracle lord, lord your, your stopping, stopping is already a miracle your calling is your wonderful gift 
Your calling is your wonderful gift. And you're asking of the question touches our human being. And you're, and you're asking of the question touches our human being. Touches the core of our heart. Touches the core of our heart. Like Bartimaeus would like to say. Like Bartimaeus would like to say. Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to see. I want to see. And that you come, O Lord. And that, that you come, O oh Lord, Lord, giving us back our sight, giving, giving us, us our, our sight. sight, the sight of our eyes, the, the sight, sight of our, our, eyes. our eyes, the sight of our hearts, the sight of our hearts, the sight of our whole being, the sight of our whole being, that everything we see, that everything we see. Should be your face, O oh Lord. Should be, Should be your, face. your face, O Lord. Face, oh Lord. And seeing you, O oh Lord. And seeing you, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. May we have the grace. May we, may we have the grace, the grace of following you. Of following you. you. Amen. 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 Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, pray for us. Saints Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, pray for us. Angel of God, my God and dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day, to light and guard, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. To rule and guide. Amen. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Anthony of Padua, pray for us. Saint Hannibal Maria di Francia, pray for us. Send, O Lord, holy, holy apostles, apostles into your church. church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the, the, Father, Son, the Son and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good evening and good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, Father. Happy Sunday, happy Father. Nice. Father. Happy, well, happy Sunday, Potita. Very, very, very nice. Wow. I want to see the face of Jesus if, if, if we wake up, no? <laughs> Once we open our eyes, yeah. Beautiful experience, siguro. Yes. Wow. But, Beautiful that's, experience, that's, huh? but it should be, Tita, because every face you see should be the face of Jesus mm -hmm. by virtue of our faith. Uh, sometimes, how can you see Jesus in the eyes of this evil, evil, you know, so many evils around us? There you mm -hmm. have to put the faith, because your faith would be now the transforming moment for them. The, but though that's hard, but you know, when it that is, is so exercised hard. on that regard, then it becomes a transforming moment because you there's one who would believe in them, but they should know that you believe that they have so much goodness still. So for, for all these uh, bad people, there's uh, there's still goodness, right? There's still good I definitely somewhere definitely. in their in their heart, siguro, no? My, mm -hmm. my goodness, but in yes, very true, very true. Uh, in each one, there is still goodness that lies ahead. Nakagawa lang yan sila siguro sa masama kasi there is something uh, an, hindi, hindi nila maanong sarili nila, Father. Beyond their yeah. control. Oh. That's, that's one. Beyond and their control. Perhaps the environment at times or perhaps even yung growth nila, childhood experiences. Yung mga traumatic they're, they're, experiences. Yes. Yeah, traumatic na hindi na tulungan, hindi na process. All of which are, you know, compounded issues at times. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. But something on the St. Paul, only goodness once more can really change them. When someone shows goodness and prayer. Oh, pray, pray, pray. Yeah. Oh. Uh, pray. 
Uh-huh. Sometimes it's so hard. No? Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's so hard to see the, the face of Jesus in the face of yeah. criminals, for example. No? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, very uh-huh. true, very true. Mm-hmm. Pero so you look at those two criminals that uh, Jesus were, was, were crucified with. When one had seen the face of Jesus, he asked, Lord, remember me when you are in paradise. In paradise. Uh-huh. So he stole as well heaven. The other one, he was so proud. He cannot even save himself. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> so, brasa tigas. <laughs> Kaya nga siguro, no, for every bad behavior, there's always some reasons behind why. Yeah. Very no? mm-hmm. And one, perhaps even no, from their childhood, faith was never instilled. And you know, oh, at times oh. parents are not really so concerned of their mission of bringing faith to them. Oh. That's why these things are happening. The environment. Yeah, oh. the environment. It, 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 goes, it, it goes back to the parents, no? The first should oh. be the first um, teachers, no? Yeah. It, it, yeah. No. Like, like everything fa- goes back to the parents. The fathers are the first priests at home. Mm. Oh, wow. The mothers are the first sisters catechists at home. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes you cannot, and no father, you cannot control because of their standard of living. Sometimes, isa pa rin yan. Maraming survival. Factor matter, eh. oh, mga uh-huh. survival. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the influences at that time. Yeah, when the faith is not strong, when the, those things about our religion are not really inculcated, even the times the children are wayward. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. <coughs> they, they don't yeah, understand. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. If they're too young, huh? if, they're, if they're too young, they don't know. They don't even know like, like why this is happening to us. That's right. Yeah, minsan sa school makita yung mga bata why they seemingly you know they are the distracted ones or causing troubles when you go back it's really uh, parents are separated the, oh. that home there is no oh, peace oh. there is always quarrel you know they so much expectation at times that are not so realistic and at times even uh, physical hurts are there Oh, yes. Abuse. A lot of things, a lot of things can really happen. Just like here, the father, no? A, a lot of, uh, I don't know, more than half of the families, it is walang tatay. There's mm-hmm. only one parent. Oh. And, and that's a very big factor. My, my tatay, tita, na wala lang. <laughs> oh, <he buys. laughs> <laughs> lost in the horizon. Lost in, lost in the horizon of Times Square. It's true, hindi pwede na walang tatay. Kaya lang, wala lang. Naligaw yan na. Naligaw. May dinaan na na ibang bahay. Nagtalang. 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 Ay, na blinded. <laughs> Ay. Ay. Ang, you know what? Ang first ano ko dito, no? It, it depends really on on the cult, culture and it, it depends on the parents. Yung the first time I was uh, yung very, 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 very uh, ano, early na, na pagpunta namin dito sa US. And the mm-hmm. first thing na parang I, I really felt so uncomfortable, uh, yung kaklase ng anak ko, oh, sabi niya, sabi niya, oh, uh, we went out um, with my mom's boyfriend. And, <laughs> <I> sabi, oh. <laughs> and, then, and then I found out na accepted ng mga bata ang boyfriend ng nanay. Mm-hmm. Oh my mom, Very my good. mom well, yeah, oh my, oh my mom this, my mom that with the boyfriend, mga ganyan ba? <laughs> the boyfriend of the mom becomes a part of the family. Mm. Very proud pa eh, na. Very proud pa. Oh, very proud pa. 
Tapos ako ba parang oh my god, sabi ko boyfriend ng nanay, parang hindi ko ma hindi ko matanggap ba na na, na tinatanggap ng mga bata ang boyfriend. Bata ang magkasama pa sila. Oo, mm. magkasama pa sila ho. My mom's boyfriend, mga ganyan ba? Ako. <laughs> Buti na sinabi, my mom ex-boyfriend. Yung plahas man na rin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ay, naku, so, Ay, so nice. America. Oh. America. Kaya, kaya moral, um, moral values dito is uh, it's not really ma- mababa ang moral values ng mga tao dito kasi mm-hmm. uh, norm, ang mga abnormal de, 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 ano, nor, normal sa kanila ang mga abnormal situations kasi yun ang naano nila they, they grow up with those uh, environment na, na. Uh, yeah, it's a pity yeah, it's a very pity, pity ta, it's, oh, a pity. It, it's true ho, it's true Oh, tapos hmm. dito is walang ano eh walang walang parang walang family dito very very ano very few very few no? very, very few, few really. especially hmm. yung mga taga dito father especially yung yung population ng mga itim oh my god hmm. very few na wow. family nila no oh, and then and then if if uh, yung mga nag-commit ng ng crime tapos um, mm-hmm. sa interview nila ang 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 ano talaga big factor is uh, there's no father in the family yeah. walang father figure sa family na miss yung father image talaga oh walang father image mm-hmm. wow iba talaga Sige. pero ano parang ano na yan morally blind Oh. Yes, oh. spiritually blind, morally blind. Mm-mm. So we need we need the, he, the healing of Jesus. We, we need him to call us. Oh. Hindi so kayo ngayon yung mga crowds to tell na Jesus is calling you. <laughs> wow. Oh. Your new mission after all today's World Mission Sunday. Oh. So you have the mission. Ay, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. You have the mission to bring the faith, to share the faith, and to give faith. I don't know if it's still happening. No, na may mission box, no. Tapos sa mga hindi naman kaya mga bata, wala na. Sa yeah. school sa camera. Ah, meron pa. Oo. Apa? Oh, mission. Sir, meron pa pa. Yes, meron pa, meron pa pa. Ah, meron pa. Yes, ah. Very nice experience. Na humihingi ka para sa mission. Yes. Oh, oh, mission Sunday pa lang ayun. Wow. Mm-hmm. So now we become missionaries. Yes. We have no, one is a missionary. Oh, we have that responsibility, no? Mm-hmm. Oh. So, so enjoy your Sunday. Take thank you very much, Father. Thank, thank you, Father. 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 Thank
what do you call this? Done to be blind, no? Because sight really is very important. I agree. And here, that was his only desire to see. He never asked for. Of course, we, it was mentioned here that he was begging. He never asked for um, riches or money. <clears throat> he just uh, want to be want to see. He never asked for power. Or just wanted to see. And also, there is this physical, oh. spiritual blindness, as Father mentioned also, in which we are also in that uh, situation, physical blindness. We're in, uh, if you are physically blind, then uh, your faith wavers. Those who are phys uh, spiritually blind do not see that there is uh, life after death. They only uh, see what is life here on earth, but not in the next. And there is also this uh, moral, moral blindness, morally blind, which is the worst kind of blindness. The mention it to Grace Canina, moral blindness. Because if you are really morally blind, you can even kill. Because morally blind is a, is a person who has no more conscience. That's why uh, he can do the worst to anybody, he can even kill. Now, if you still have some, have some sense of uh, guilt, oh. you still feel the guilt then you are not totally morally blind. Partially, maybe. Because if you are uh, totally morally blind, then there is no... These are people who have no more conscience. Oh. Uh -huh. And there is... Uh, rather a new kind of blindness, you know, a knowledge that blinds. Blind Bartimaeus shows the way out of blindness. First and most importantly, he demonstrates that faith leads to sight. I have read uh, something that uh, the breastplate of St. Patrick contains a curious prayer invoking God's power against every knowledge that blinds the soul of man. Sometimes it's called the knowledge that corrupts, binds and or defiles. Whatever the translation, the point remains the same and runs contrary to our cult culture's way of thinking. We live by this silly, simplistic notion that knowledge is power. We can't imagine a bad kind of knowledge. St. Patrick knew better. He knew our need to be defended against that kind of knowledge that, only, that not only fails to help, but in fact threatens us. It is a knowledge that promises sight 
but delivers blindness. Blind Bartimaeus at least knew that he was blind. It was that knowledge that prompted him to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. He was a salutary blindness. His was a salutary blindness in as much as it caused him to seek healing. To be blinded by one's own knowledge is another matter. It blinds even as it claims to give sight and thus renders us blind to our own blindness. Take, for example, the contraceptive mentality. With a, with a widespread acceptance and use of contraception, we thought we have obtained a knowledge of know-how and know-how better than anyone before. In fact, the contraceptive mentality has blinded us to what our ancestors knew well. The truth of man, woman, sexuality, and marriage. For if procreation can be eliminated from the marital act, why does the act have to remain within marriage? Why the need for marriage at all? Indeed, why restrict it to a man and a woman? And since contraception rejects what is distinctive about man and woman, their ability to procreate, why, sh why should we think that a, to be a man or to be a woman means anything or is even a reality? Thus, we have been blinded to truth, once well known. The contraceptive mentality is connected to another blinding knowledge the modern understanding of freedom as to uh, as the ability to do whatever I want. Thus understood, freedom requires the rejection of all limits. Of course, once you remove limits, you remove meaning. Something has meaning only to the degree that it has limits. Limitlessness isn't freedom. It's meaninglessness. When we insist on such freedom, we blind ourselves to our own meaning and thus invite that the very dissolution we're witnessing, we are witnessing. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Tito Mani. Beautiful. Moral blindness. Wow. Um, any any other add-ons? Any comments? Tita, can I uh, give my reflection? Oh, sure. Okay. From, from the hospital bed. <laughs> Let me pray here in the hospital bed. And today... Today is your day, Lord. I want to leave it well. I want to calmly turn my heart to you and praise in worship. I want to leave aside the demands of work and hustle of life and bustle of this crazy world. I want to rest in your presence and delight in your gift, good gifts the beauty and creation, the love of my family, the joy of working with you today. You can take care of the universe without my help for a little while. Teach me to keep this Lord's day holy. At that time, Bar Bartimaeus wasted a t of time. Bartimaeus wasted no time complaining. He didn't reproach God for allowing his blindness and all the sufferings and misery it caused. He didn't demand explanations from God. He didn't 
pour out his energy, blaming God for his having fallen victim to the unfolding brokenness of this fallen world. How much time we waste complaining, how much energy we spend trying to figure and things that we ought to, sim to simply accept it. To simply accept it. Yet, on the other hand, Bartimaeus didn't pretend that everything was okay. He didn't ignore his suffering and need. He was poignantly aware of his limitations. And as a result, as soon as he heard that Jesus was passing by, he started crying out even more loudly when the famous rabbi and Tourage tried to shush him. Bartimaeus avoided two unhealthy attitudes that we can often fall into the attitudes of drain precious energy from our spirit, an excessive self-pity, an excess, an excess self-reliance, which is our typical pitfall. What does Bartimaeus have to say to me? the wealth of the net needy. Why did the blind beggar have such a vibrant hope in Jesus while wealthy and well-educated Jewish leaders had only suspicion and disdain for him? We saw Bartimaeus throwing aside his cloak and springing to his feet as soon as he heard that Jesus was willing to hear him out. He called him son of David, showing that somehow he recognized Jesus for the Messiah. He was such an eager, eager openness. Such faith, such spiritual insight, and all in a poor man a marginalized and a suffering man. One would think that the expert and the leaders would be much more in, in tune with the truth. But when it came to recognizing Christ for who he was really, they were blind ones. Is there something about being successful and popular that isolates us from Christ, that darkens our spiritual visions, perhaps not intrinsically, but circumstantially, it does mean seen to be the pattern in the New Testament. If we think that we don't heed God, if we don't need God, we will be much more likely to overlook God's action and love in our lives. Today's secularized culture, we need to be specially aware of this tendency. We are bombarded by the thousands, by the thousands of messages every day coming to us in so many different forms that invites us to defend entirely ourselves to achieve the helplessness and the fulfillment we yearn. For if we are dissatisfied with the state of friendship with Christ, maybe it's because those messages have penetrated in our hearts and minds more than we realize. The obvious question is, the blind man was brought to Jesus and Jesus asked him a question. What do you want me to do for you? 
was ser was Jesus serious? Wasn't it obvious that this man wanted? He had heard about Jesus' miracles, and he wanted the miracle for himself. He wanted to regain insight. So why did Jesus ask the question? Maybe it was just a conversation starter, but maybe it was a sincere query. Maybe Jesus respected this man so much that until actually giving him a chance to exercise his human dignity by making a free explicit request of the Lord, God, wants to be involved in our lives he also wants he also wants us to live our lives in full that means taking responsibility for ourselves our actions our desires our decisions certainly he knows what we need even better than we know ourselves but he didn't create us to be robots programmed by our creator down to the slightest behavior. He created us to be co-creators, to be creative, to take ownership of the gifts and opportunities we have been given. Without Christ and his grace, we can do nothing. That's in John 15, verse, 15, verse 5. But without exercising our own freedom and choosing to enter into our into friendship with him, no matter the cost, we cannot access that grace. If you wish to be perfect, go sell what, what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven Then come follow me as in Matthew 19 21 our Lord's interaction with Bartimaeus is a pattern of his interaction with each one of us Jesus hears the cry of our hearts that suffers in this fallen world he arranges us to come to him to encounter him and invites us to his grace, but then he patiently and respectfully awaits our faith, faith-filled response. Will he wait in vain? Let us talk to the Lord. I am so blind, Lord. I am so blind that I don't even recognize my own blindness. I think I know how things should be. I think I am always right and everyone else is wrong. I often come to you just to complain and to tell you how to be, how to fix everything. But I want to come to you humbly, joyfully, and faithfully today. I didn't want to ignore my needs, but I want them to open to me your grace. I want to recognize your pressure to reach out, to encounter you, to believe with all of my heart everything that you have revealed to, the, to us and about yourself and ourselves the path of the true happiness i believe lord you know i do but my faith is so weak have pity on me lord for i want to see i want to see you lord amen amen Amen. Thank you very much, Tito Elmer. Thank you very much. Um, 
And now let's um, let's do the, uh, the three pointers. Let's hear from Tita Linda. The three pointers for today's gospel. Number one, we must first have the gift of faith before we can turn to God for help. Number two, the blind man in the story was in great need, but he had faith that Jesus could cure him. As a result, he was rewarded with a cure. Number three, we need to follow the courage of this blind man, not only to turn to God for our needs, but also remember that only God has our best interest in his heart. That way, we will be aware that God is always there for us. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Tita Linda. So if we are blind, let's cure, let's cure our blindness. And um, some faith. Yeah. And, and, and faith that we see Jesus in everything we see, everything we meet, every single face we see. In any situation, just uh, let's just have more faith in our hearts. That as uh, Father Danny said, um, and confirmed that for every every bad situation, every bad behavior, there's always reason behind. So let's keep our faith burning. Um, closing prayer. Yes. Okay. Tita, Tita Bell, do you have a closing prayer? You want to do the closing prayer? You're, you're uh, muted. <laughs> okay, for the closing prayer, let us close our eyes once again. And Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you that we can live in your light and walk in your truth. May the things that you have revealed and thoughts that we have shared dwell in our hearts and steer us in action and to action. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good evening. Good morning. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. <laughs>